we're back on the 60 MGA restoration project. I've already got a few hours of work I've done to it without filming it because it was all the little nitpick stuff like just putting the screws on the bottom of the fenders and dealing with a broken bolt in the fender well here that I missed when I was doing the, the metal work on it trying to get that drilled out and just putting a couple bolts in like the back of the of uh, the uh, splash shields and tightening some of them bolts things that aren't really all that exciting so but we're back and we're going to continue moving forward on it all right so we're getting our splash shields put in here now when i painted these splash shields i painted them separate from the body and i used a gray sealer instead of a white sealer because I was in the middle of moving and couldn't really do it in a paint booth and I used spray cans of the same paint code rather than the actual uh, paint from the gallon can so it actually ended up coming out a little darker because out of the spray can it was it really needed a couple more coats to lighten it up a little bit more than and I thought it was good and now that I put it next to the other stuff it's not as good as I thought it was but it's a driver He's okay with it, and um, it's not meant to be a show car here. So you got all these bolts that go down here, and in our case, some of these bolts we had to put nuts on the back side of. And when people do metal work on these things, sometimes these things don't line up, or they don't put captive nuts back in, or whatever, and it's fairly common to see that stuff. And actually, there's a little tab that comes off the bottom here, and there'll be one more screw that goes through here to hold all that together but you got to get that to line up right and i haven't done that one yet and in the back here i always leave these loose until you get this bolt in here and get everything to kind of look right because there's two bolts here and there's a lot of adjustment there uh, and then tighten everything down once all, all everything's in there and there's no seals around this one and then the front ones here you just have these two bolts up here and then there's two sheet metal screws down at the bottom that hold it in here so now i'm getting ready to or i'm just starting to wet sand the bonnet out which it, there was only a couple specks of dirt i needed to get out and then just go over it lightly just to get a tiny bit of orange peel out so that it matches the rest of the car and then we can start buffing. So I already actually went over the couple specks of dust that was in there with 800 grit wet dry water to get those flattened off. So now I'm going back over with a thousand grit. Now you should have, we should take your water and just put just like one drop of dish soap in, in your water for like a quart of water just so you have a little bit of lubricant and you need to make sure when you're wet sanding keep lots of water on in the area and you got to be very careful and listen to how it sounds and be, pay very close attention to how it feels because as you're sanding you can some you, if a piece a small piece of dust or dirt gets under the sandpaper it'll roll around under the sandpaper and call and get you'll get scratches in the paint and you can hear and feel that if you're paying close attention because the sound will change you'll almost hear nothing when you're wet sanding with and nothing's under it then you'll hear you'll start hearing like a high-pitched little like scratching sound and that's when you know and you need to stop immediately and flush everything with water because you can create scratches that are then hard to get out. Now you want to make sure when you're doing this that everything is clean. You want the surface to be clean, wipe it down before you start it, make sure there's no dirt on it. 
make sure your water's clean actually it's like i used in this case bottled water um added with the added soap into it make sure your sanding block is clean and the paper is clean all that stuff is clean and the towel that you wipe it down with make sure it's clean towel because you don't want any dirt to get in on this while you're doing this so then once you wipe it down you can let it dry then you can really look it over and use the light to find like here i got a spot here that's not quite enough and you can look over it and see by using a reflection whether you got the orange peel out of it or not because those spots will still be shiny and um, so then i'll go back over and maybe do some light touch up here and there and then now we'll go to either 1200 or 1500 and i'll see what i got with me right now and then we go to 1500 grit then i'll go buff it out from there if you're doing a show car finish you would step it down more progressively and, and go beyond 1500 grit but it also depends partly on what you have for rubbing compound and your buffing pads i use a waffled pad which does a better job and i don't have to go down to like 2000 grit or finer because those pads work really well and I use a good professional quality rubbing compound as well, which is quite expensive, about 60, 70 bucks a quart. Um, so yeah, this is just a driver. We're not even trying to get 100% of the orange peel out. We're just trying to make it look nice. And this is all we need to do for this car, just 1,000, 1,500, buff it out, it'll be every bit as good as or even better than what the owner is looking for. So you need to remember the cost of a paint job is mostly the labor to do a paint job and do it right is a lot of work and a lot of time especially if you want it to look good in the end you, there's no shortcuts in painting and that's why paint jobs cost so much money that and the materials are going up all the time and it's not cheap to buy the materials and even stuff like, like I said, $70 for a, a bottle of rubbing compound. And even these pads, like these are the waffled pads. Like this is for uh, rubbing. And then this is for the, like the polishing or the fine machine glaze afterwards. This is a softer pad with less waffling than this is. So this is a little more aggressive. Um, even these are like $35 a piece. So when you go and get a paint job you go get a price of five thousand dollars you know you got to realize there's a ton of work you can't paint a car and do a halfway reasonable job of one that doesn't even need much work for under 40 hours that's a lot of work and expense on the shop doing it sandpaper is expensive Primers are expensive, the paint's expensive, everything. And there's a lot of money wrapped up in doing this kind of work. Not to mention the tools and equipment and paint booth. It's quite expensive to set up to do paint, which is why I'm questioning whether I'm going to set up in my new shop to do paint or not. Because I don't have an, I'm not sure that I have enough years left of painting to make it worth the investment of setting up a paint booth. As you can see here, as you go finer with the sandpaper, you actually start seeing more and more shine actually on the, the paint. And like if I were to go to like 2000 grit or something, this would actually be a lot more shiny than this. 
and now I'm ready to start buffing. So the rubbing out process can make or break a paint job. Um, you can spray a car and get some orange peel in it, get a little bit of dust in it and all that, and you can work all that stuff out if you do it right. But if you do it wrong, you can mess a paint job up and have to repaint the car. And buffing is no exception, especially when you're talking like on an MGB, where you have the seams at the top of the quarters. You can rub through the paint or burn the paint really easily. And a lot of painters get really uptight about the process of rubbing a car out because it you can mess up a paint job and it's a ton of work to come back and repaint it and fix it so you know, always have to make sure you have enough paint on there because you don't want to rub through and like this is clear coat so you don't want to bust through the clear because then you're back to painting it all over again um, and like I always hear people online talking about you know do all the prep work and then take the car to a painter and have a professional paint it well in my mind that's almost backwards because if the bodywork sucks it doesn't matter how good the painter is it's still going to look like crap when it's done but if the bodywork is really good underneath you know you could and then you're and you're playing with just solid colors not metallics it's actually not that hard to lay down an acceptable enough paint job that you can rub it out and make it look like a million bucks at the end of the day. Like I've done award-winning paint jobs with $15 Harbor Freight guns. It just takes more time to rub it out and make it look nice when you're done because you're never going to get the paint layout quite as nice. So let's get started buffing on this thing. You gotta remember when you very first start doing this, the pad is dry. So the very first hit, you kind of gotta get a little bit of extra on there and get some into the, worked into the pad before you can really start going smooth. just a little sample real quick doing it quickly it'll take me more time to actually get what I want out of it but now we'll go to time-lapse to finish it All right, so here we go. What I'm going to do now, now this car, now this can get bolted back onto the car. And then once everything is bolted together on the car, and I'll go over the whole car with the, what they call the machine polish, which is what will bring the last bit of that shine up out of it. 
and make everything and take any swirl marks and stuff that might be in there from the buffing. And yes, this is pretty messy. Stuff splatters everywhere. So when you're working on this stuff, you got to think about that because it could splatter all over the car, all over stuff around you. So you got to cover everything up. So when you're bolting the bonnet on, it can be a bit nerve wracking because you don't want to scratch any of the paint and chip things up. So I make sure I put towels around everything, especially back here, because this is where you're most likely to drop the bonnet and touch hit here while you're bolting it up here. And then you got to be very careful when you're setting it down to make sure it's all lined up because you know you got movement in the hinges and movement within the hinge to bonnet connection and it's always super close here getting it all to clear the the cow here and not touch up here these are a really tight fit there's it's almost almost every one i've ever seen it's like that opening needs to be about an eighth of an inch longer to give the clearance that you really want to make it all fit perfect. So it's always a tight fit and, and not a lot of room for error on these. So I got the bonnet on here now. Now I didn't show the process of that because um, it's a little fiddly and I didn't want to deal with camera and stuff. But normally on these things, you're really struggling to get enough gap here to where you feel like you got enough space to not rub the edge here and still and have enough gap here where this is like not touching this is actually about as good a fit as you ever see on an MGA you usually end up seeing it a little tighter here than what I've got it and a little tighter here than what I've got it and I have seen some cars where you you just really struggle to get it. Uh, where I've had cars where customers are like, can you make this fit better? Where they're rubbing here. But it's such a little difference. You can't move it enough forward to get any real clearance there without it wanting to scrape up here. That's how a lot of cars are. But you got to remember... These things were largely handmade, and there's a lot of variances from car to car. Like actually, you usually can't take a fender off of one car and put it on another and have it be the same length. All right, now it's as far as we're gonna take that this week. And while we're on the subject of paint jobs and you know show quality worthiness and whatever, you're not gonna hear this from me that often, but I am gonna toot my own horn for a moment here. The cover car on Hemmings Classic Car for July 2022 is a car that I painted. I did not build the car. I actually ended up giving the guy some advice through the process and built a couple pieces for the car. But then when he was ready to paint it, we did the, um, I did all the body and paint work on the car. So it's a 46 MGTC boat tail special what if car. Uh, trying to say what if MG it continued its racing program through post war, what would that car have looked like? So once again, if you like what I'm doing, like, share with your friends, subscribe. It's MG Rob. Later.